Kota City Skyline City B Art. Recently, I was discussing City Skyline stuff with my buddy Fast Forward Place, and then to make a point, I brought him over to my Let's Play City of Dragon and showed him how stuff actually works here. When we were finished, he called it art. Not because of those two props here, those were just placed for the awesome intro. No, the actual art is in its logistics. You see, the rail pumping goods into our city and the traffic on the highway is pretty much not worth mentioning given the size of 116,000 population, which is kind of the size where most city skylines let's plays end, right? So the question is, where is everybody? <laughs> yes, of course, public transport will always be busy. But that is not today's topic, because today's topic is how to grow a big city skyline city without the usual problems. Hello peeps, Struggadil! As it is a new year and I got a bunch of new subscribers, I was thinking maybe they'd appreciate a little introduction into our actual Let's Play project. Because the real intention behind Draken always was to get things straight. Because there are so many myths out in the community which do not hit the nail exactly on the head. One of these things for example is that you should spread out your industry into small pockets throughout your city. Uh, you know, kinda works, but as industry is interconnected, it creates traffic between those pockets and do you really want to let that loose on your already troubled road system? I mean, there's rail of course, but we'll get to that later. Let's have a look at Draken from above. If that should be true, this industry area should not exist. What if I told you that this residential slash commercial area in the smooth green colored traffic flow, besides a few red spots, is chaos? And this industry area in the strong red is order. Trust me on that. It's flowing, it's just red because it's busy. Try to put yourself in the shoes of a truck driver. Consider this. Over here, every junction has the potential of interfering traffic. Like an entire wedding course or could come around the corner honking, merk, merk, hey. And you as a truck driver just think, dang, my schedule is screwed. Now, hopefully we all agree that after we have enough experience and we left the beginner stages, the only thing holding us back from building a big city is traffic. Yes, you will need all those little tricks to fix junctions just for the residential commercial area, but to bring this a step further, we have to tackle the final boss in city skylines, which is industry traffic. Compared to my chaos example, the ideal situation for a truck would be to just spawn fully loaded, drive down the road, make its delivery and then let's not forget about the return trip back to its origin where the truck despawns. I know some people are working here with little cheats like using one way roads so the despawn happens after the delivery but that's kind of cheating and not our thing. At least if not necessary. And you also want the truck to be available very quickly again so it should go fast. So highways are the ideal solution for that. The nice side effect about building highways leading from point A to point B is that they are not leading home or into a shopping area, so those are not interfered by regular traffic. The question now is, what do we have to connect to each other? Well, City Skylines has a supply chain. It's on the official wiki. We have to build along this. So this goes from extractor to storage, from storage to processing, from processing to warehouse, from warehouse to either the industry or the unique factories, from those to rail, at least that's how I build it in Draken, and rail then brings it over into the commercial zones where the goods are sold. Sadly, that is not all because we could always import or export. So when building Draken, I decided that we are not going to import because importing traffic would mess with the traffic in our city. Ideally, we also do not want to export. So the focus really is on having everything balanced, which means we need to constantly monitor our production in all those steps. And I rather export some excess goods before importing stuff. And when exported, we preferably want to do that via rail because we want to keep the trucks working in our city. The number one problems which I read everywhere on the forums and reddits and such is overproduction because this causes our trucks not to be available in our city. And that's the situation when all these not enough materials or not enough buyers emerge. Now City Skylines truck traffic has this nasty habit of when doing a delivery, it stops in front of the building, blocking all the traffic behind it. And this is where City Skylines actually deviates from the real world. Doesn't matter because we City Skylines players have to deal with that. 
In order to mitigate this slight difference between travel speed and stopping, we have to find a solution for that to still keep up with the traffic. The solution is, while trucks are probably happily driving after each other at a single lane to their destination at full speed, we will have then to split them to work on the delivery on parallel lanes to allow as many of those stops possible. And the easiest way of splitting them up is to separate them by giving them each a different destination depending on the resource they are transporting. Now you might go like, okay, but why is this still looking so weird? Ah, so let's get into road layout planning. This involves thinking about where does stuff come from? Obviously, stuff is coming from the extraction area and obviously, it wants to return there. But eventually this thing also wants to export. And when this thing is done at the rail station, from the rail station, it wants to return to this facility. And this facility also has to provide its goods for the processing area. And also when finished, the trucks have to return to this facility from the processing area. In the case of a storage building, we actually have three direction where traffic is coming from and also three direction where traffic wants to go to. Now, additional consideration, how to connect those three directions where traffic is coming from to our two targets. Now, if something like this was your first idea, then the traffic in city skylines is going to instantly remind you that you wanted to create a high capacity solution. To not fall back into this trap, I formulated a little principle for myself. I call it diverge before you converge and this is how it looks applied. Of course, all these guidelines I applied throughout the entire industry area, but there is more. The way I make my warehouses or storage buildings work together is by having them all in line and the first to be approached by trucks I set to empty and all the others in the line to balanced. I spare you the details, but now while it is true that vehicles most probably pick the fastest route to their destination, picking the destination for a trip seems to be strongly influenced by proximity, not considering the length of the route required to get there. Which brings us to our next point. You will have to place cargo train stations within your industry area in order to make rail the preferred method of transporting goods and thus keeping trucks off your highways. Placing the stations is one thing, how to connect them another. Let's talk about rail yard layout. First off, we are only working with terminal stations, meaning the station is only connected with tracks on one side. This is necessary in order to keep external trains out of our internal network, for we definitely do not want external trains to drive into our commercial zones. But this allows most stations within the industry area to receive imports of raw materials or processed materials if necessary. Second, our cargo train stations should be able to receive and deliver to our cargo hub. Third, the cargo hub must not be accessible from the outside to prevent it being used as transfer station to put off-map freight on ships. And fourth, all train stations including the cargo hub should be able to deliver goods into our commercial zones and also export. Rail stations have this nasty habit of trying to repurpose trains after they have unloaded. Now to prevent nearly empty trains being sent back into our industry area coming from the commercial zones, we will have to use the one-way trick. There is no way around this. Now regarding in the commercial zone, I would like to provide a new perspective. Hopefully all of you are familiar with road hierarchy. Now I want to add a little layer to that. And for this, we need to focus on the entry and exit points for regular vehicles and freight trucks. As you can see, they don't share them, meaning most of the travel on the actual same grid, they do not interfere with each other. And that really improves traffic flow. Whew. Should you have come this far in this video, I really applaud you. Because this was not easy digestible stuff and it was a lot of it. The thing is, I would really like to see more bigger and better performing cities out there. So hopefully this video helped you out. You can of course leave comments and ask for stuff. I am also building up my own Discord server right now. Uh, the link will be on the channel page. Feel free to join and have a chat. Hope to see you in the next episode of Building Dragon. Thanks for watching and Bye guys!